Hi everybody, my name is Tim and I'm just another science guy, but today I got a really cool motor build project for you. It's a bipolar DC motor that very few people have seen. And what makes this motor really cool is that you've got a lot better efficiency compared to the old style unipolar motor. It's a very simple design, but because of it's more efficient, it's a much more higher performance. So let's get started. So like any motor, simple motor, you're gonna need a permanent magnet. Here's some ceramic block magnets I picked up at the hardware store. Other magnets will work. You need one, but you can use two and you can do some other cool experiments also. You're gonna need some 16 or 18 gauge enameled copper wire. Here, this is about 18 gauge. It's got an enamel coating that actually insulates the copper conductor. So what it means is something touching this side of the wire, this with the coating, doesn't conduct electricity. You'll need about 18 inches of this. Any motor, you're gonna need a power supply. Great thing about this efficient motor is you can use two AA batteries. And also I'm gonna use this battery as a form to make the rotor or the armature on this new motor. You're gonna need a cup or tin can or something to set your motor on. Now you can use metal, just remember that metals conduct electricity. So you wanna coat this with paper or tape to insulate it so your motor doesn't shut out. Now another thing you're gonna need with this motor, you're gonna need a couple paper clips. I use the large style paper clips without the ridges and these are actually gonna support the rotor on your motor. But also I'm gonna use the, the electrical conductivity of the paper chip the paper clip to power the rotor or the armature. Now you could use copper wire if you don't have a paper clip. You can use some other things too. You're gonna need a couple rubber bands, some scotch tape or thread to tie the rotor. You're gonna need like a piece of emery board, a small knife or something to scrape the enamel off the copper wire. So let's get started. So what really makes this motor unique is the actual, the coil. Now here's a unipolar coil. You can see what it looks like. It's got a fair amount of, of metal in it. What makes this rotor, this is the bipolar motor. You can see it's got two coils. And you can see here's how it looks. You can see here as I rotate this coil, you can see the exposed copper wire there that actually conducts electricity then the red is the enamel. So what happens is this turns on the paper clips. It's gonna turn this coil on and off electrically. And what's gonna happen is with that little bit of electrical energy there, it's gonna form an electromagnet, which is gonna interact with a permanent magnet on the mount and cause this rotor to turn. And as it turns, it's gonna give it a little impulse of energy. It's gonna turn, the inertia is gonna carry it around past the insulated material, and it's gonna turn it on again. And by turning it on and off real quick, quickly, it's gonna cause this rotor to rotate. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with a battery. And I'm just using a, could any cylinder would work, but I'm gonna use this AA battery. I'm gonna take my copper wire, and I'm gonna wrap it around here, oh, let's say six times, eight times. What I do is I want an even number of coils so I can bend out or splay out these coils like this to make a, a rotor, which is actually balanced. It's got an equal amount of copper on both sides of this. These two ends of the copper wire are gonna form the shaft for the rotor or armature. And then what I've gotta do is tie some thread or dental floss, whatever you have tape around here to hold these coils together to, to make kind of a firm unit. Once you get that all tied up, the critical part here is laying this out and scraping off the electrical insulation very specifically on for both sides of the shaft, but you're going to want to do it on both sides of the where the coils are. So I'm gonna to wanna to do this side. I'm gonna to wanna to rotate it, turn it over and do this side. Then I'm gonna do the other side of the shaft. 
And what I'm going to end up with is with a rotor that I'm going to straighten and get kind of straight and organized, but it's going to be conducting, turning on and off. And I'm just going to put this little bend here in the end, this little kind of hook in the end to keep it from sliding off the paper clips. So the next step is taking your paper cup, putting a couple rubber bands on it, bending out your paper clips. I'm going to bend out the paper clip. It works better with a pair of pliers. You can do it with your hands or coin between your fingers. You're going to bend it out. You're going to put a little loop or hook in the end to support the rotor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that temporarily to the cup. It's going to support my rotor. I'm going to take the battery, excuse me, the magnet. I'm going to tape or hold on the battery with scotch tape. And I'm going to form this unit right here and I'm going to adjust the height or separation between the rotor and the magnet to get it so it's just above the, uh, the magnet so it doesn't touch but can rotate freely. Now you might need to bend the rotor around to get it to balance and you can test it without power. Once you get that all set up, the next thing is actually to connect up your motor to a power supply. And I'm just gonna hold these on to the clips like this. And I'm just going to attach this. I have to give it a little push, but there you go. There's a bipolar DC motor. Very few people have seen this. Your science teacher hasn't seen this, so here's a chance to impress your friends. I want to thank Yuki Matsumoto for publicizing her work on this motor. I've got the reference at the end of this article. You can check. It's got some great things in it. And thank you for visiting our channel, and have a good afternoon.